Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. So, uh, well as you can see I took some of the batteries out of uh, this case uh, from the last time I was doing the battery fitment chart. I do have a bit of an update on um, this configuration though. I mentioned I was doing, uh, I had issues maybe with polarity. I might have actually resolved them. I might have done a thing with like, you know, I kill two birds with one stone, but I'll talk about that in another video. Um, it's it's a it's a little bit different issue uh, when I finally start to string the cells together. Um, I'll talk about that a bit. Um, here though, I wanted to talk about this. This is actually the NIM uh, battery pack. So uh, the one that I loaded up here just for fitment and testing. This is the uh, uh, lead acid battery, uh, but there were two different versions of the battery. So the the lead acid. Uh, and then the NIM. Now, the lead acid, they actually double stacked uh, the cells, whereas this NIM one, all of the cells actually fit, all 25 of the NIM cells fit uh, in this, this pack here at the base level. There was no double stacked cells. Um, but what's interesting about this is, you know, I've been cleaning these out uh, and, uh, you know, so like right here, you can kind of see some of the fiberglass got peeled up because they, they were putting like these metal metal pieces in here uh, using like, I think like JB weld or something of that nature. Uh, and uh, and so I had to pry them off. I actually found, <laughs> funny enough, that uh, I think a hammer, a claw, just a regular claw hammer. Uh, and this is actually some of the remaining uh, weld material. Uh, but I found that, that just a, a basic claw hammer was the easiest way to pry it up and away. I, I might put some sort of epoxy here to just kind of fix that exposed fiberglass, um, but it's really just more of a surface issue. I don't think it's anything structural. And I had to do that uh, with the lids too, where they had brackets, uh, I think as spacers to hold the, hold the battery cells in place, uh, but they aren't really structural. But um, in addition to this, and this is why, you know, this is all about just cleaning out um, this this uh, cell, there's, there's the, this border that they put, this spacing, and um, as, it, you know, that you'll remember from uh, when I did here, where I talked about having to have a space because of the, the vertical clearance on the cell uh, and, and this, this lid and the lip on the lid. Well, it looks like for the NIM pack, they actually had the same thing anyway. They already had uh, this this border going along uh, as, as sort of a spacer. And I think it's just because of the different size of the NIM cells uh, versus the lead acid cells. So the thing is, this is actually made of some sort of a um, low density um, polyethylene like LDPE. And you know, I you can cut it with a knife, um, but it's pretty labor intensive. Uh, it's pretty, you know, pretty stout material. And, um, you know, I, I also tried the Dremel tool, but the, the Dremel, the blade isn't very big. Um, you know, I like the fact that it was small um, and it was sort of easy to maneuver, uh, but the blade wasn't very big and it just ends up melting it anyway. And the actual proper way, uh, to cut this material is with what they call a hot knife, right? It's just basically uh, you, you melt it. And uh, I'm going to test one out now. Like, I, I don't really, I haven't even tested this one out yet. This is just a, a cheap hot knife one that I was able to find. I already did the spacing, right? So this, this won't actually go um, all the way to the base. Uh, like this, this is a, a sort of a spacer guide that you can adjust. Uh, to control your depth. Um, it will affect my ability to go to the edge of the pack here, uh, but I'll have to watch it. Now this thing takes only 180 um, watts, and I, I have a little uh, Greenworks uh, inverter that I'm gonna test out, otherwise I'm gonna have to run a long extension cord out here. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna test this out, because this can output 300 watts, this is 180 watts, you know, this battery is 288 watt hours, so I should actually have a decent amount of runtime if this can power the, the heat tool. Uh, yeah, what do you think, Jack? Okay, well, I'll try to try to do a good job. But yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll get the kitty out of the way and, uh, 
and I'll, I'll set this up and of course PPE you need eye protection and uh, and glove protection before I start I have this metal thing it's not really attached but I'm just using it here so I can set the hot blade in it um, and, and have a place to put it that's not a, a fire danger um, or you know possibly won't damage the actual uh, box itself so let me get that set up and I'll start to try to hot knife and and cut like butter it's kind of hard to tell here but yeah I'm actually just having to press it in and it's working somewhat doesn't seem like the greatest tool but compared to the amount of effort that was going into cutting this LDPE before I think it's actually worth it um, I just need to strategize the best way to actually cut into this and remove chunks basically this whole process could end up taking you know quite a while <laughs> It doesn't even look like it's the same material consistently throughout. It looks like there's some green plastic in here as well. I'm not sure what that's from. Oh, that's actually some sort of foam on the inside. Yeah, I don't, I, that's what I didn't want to have to do. And I don't know if this is indicates that this actually isn't stock from Ford. This actually looks like it maybe was aftermarket. So any of you Ford Ranger electric experts out there, let me know if this is actually how the pack was supposed to look or if I'm actually cutting out someone else's hard work that they put into maybe packing batteries in here. end up time lapsing this but um, in the meantime you see what I mean there's this foam padding inside so it's not uh, LDP uh, LDPE all the way throughout um, so uh, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and, and see if I can cut this out hopefully it's solid like this edge at least up to that edge and if it is that might make it much easier to go ahead and clean out so uh, yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and try to cut the rest of this out As you can see, I've made a decent amount of progress from that uh, time lapse, but um, you know, I'm going to bring back the heat gun, I think, because as effective as a paint chipper here, this paint peeler, paint knife, 
Um, it's pretty effective, but you know, as you can see, there's still a lot of resistance from uh, you know, from this uh, LDPE, which I have to issue a, a you know a correction. I don't think it's um, low density polyethylene. I think it's a, a low density piece of excrement, I believe is the actual technical term. So I do apologize for, for that error. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just try to, try to maybe use this, uh, paint knife to, to, to just kind of keep things separated, like the offspring said, and then use that as a means to, to sort of, um, peel this, these sections away from the, the base of the, uh, the base of the tray, because, um, I don't know that I'm going to get it that, that clean, but so far I'm, I'm kind of happy with the results, um, until I get to this, uh, this other edge over here, and then I might not be as happy, um, but for now, I'm kind of liking how this knife is cutting, not quite hot knife through butter, but like a hot knife through a overcooked London broil or something maybe. Um, so a little bit of effort still, but you know, enough to, enough to, to kind of, to kind of get things working. I wasn't expecting this to be easy. Um, and it's not, <laughs> but, uh, but it is easier and I might still end up using like the Dremel tool, uh, or something to, to maybe, uh, do the, the fine finishing touches on this. Like I said, I don't know who, who did this, if this was aftermarket or not, but oh my goodness, I would never, I'd never put to, together a battery pack like this. Um, it's just, the struggle is real. All right, well, I, I think that's enough for now. I think I'm gonna close out for the day. Um, this is gonna be a pretty long video otherwise. Um, you know, this is nowhere near done in terms of cleaning out this battery case. I mean, I still have a, a cell number label down there that I think needs to be peeled off. Again, I think this is a rebuilt pack. I actually don't think that, uh, uh, that yeah, there it is, the, the little, number four cell. I, I think this is a rebuilt pack that maybe originally started as a lead acid pack and they retrofitted it for um, NIM cells. Got most of this LDPE out and then whatever this foam is. But what I ran into here, interestingly, some sort of a, like, I don't know if this was fused on, but it, maybe a little plastic layer. Uh, right right along here that you can see so maybe I can get that out but I'm not going to do that right now um, I want to get this all cut back to that back um, back wall layer uh, and then just uh, you know sweep out the box and maybe uh, maybe just scrub it down with some soapy water or whatever there's a lot of like oil um, a lot of oil on here a lot of residue and buildup that that I don't like um, but you know, can I just say like to, to end this, right? I mean, whatever, this is a, a cheap heat knife. It, it certainly makes cutting this plastic a lot easier. Um, the, the blade bends a little bit. It's not that great. And I was wrong. It's actually a, uh, 130 watt. Um, so yeah, I just picked this up at a local Harbor Freight because it was the only thing that was local that was available. But um, I just want to say this thing has been kicking, but what the heck? So, um, you know, I was a little bit worried about it. I've, I've used this for a few other things, mostly, you know, keeping my computer charged. <laughs> now it's got like <laughs> molten plastic on it. Um, 
but um, I've been using this for like when the power outages to like keep my computer computer charged or whatever it runs off that same 80 volt system but my goodness this thing has been a little powerhouse um, you know I did I did recharge it a little bit so don't let that fool you the, the full battery but um, yeah it's only 300 watts but this thing has just been crazy you know it's got the little carrying handle it's pretty rugged pretty mobile um, one 120 volt uh, two USBs but man this thing has just been just been a boss right now so um, I'm glad I had it to, to kind of help out uh, cleaning cleaning this battery out like you like said just a bunch of this a bunch of this plastic and uh, I, I guess they just need it as a spacer uh, suffice to say I won't be using this as a spacer though I might reuse um, or just build around like I said this plastic border that they included anyway so I'm gonna like I said uh, keep just cleaning this out I uh, don't want to don't want to make this video boring right and then uh, and I'll update when uh, this is all cleaned out and I start to uh, migrate some of these uh, these cells into their into what I hope will be their their final configuration anyway I'd love to hear what you uh, what you think? What do you think of the video? What do you think of that little inverter? That thing is, like I said, just a nice 300 watt, 80 volt inverter that's been running a, you know, fairly power intensive 130 watt uh, heat gun. Have you ever worked with this uh, LDPE plastic before? Um, if you know about the original Ford Ranger electric, Ford Ranger battery pack, is this even uh, stock for the NIM uh, battery? Um, is this from Ford Factory or is this something that may be aftermarket or a rebuild uh, with the NIM cells or an upgrade with the NIM cells? Um, because I don't remember seeing this anywhere else. So, and it, and it is a pain to remove and I, I hope I can work around it. So anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and uh, thank you for watching.